Hi, today I'm going to walk you through how to prepare for the Cyber Patriot Exhibition Rounds. To start, we're going to need the Exhibition Round download and instruction email, which is typically sent to the registered coaches about a week before the round begins. As with any pre-competition email, read this thoroughly. For the purpose at hand, we need the link to the Exhibition Round Instructions document, which can be found here. Clicking the link opens the Instructions PDF document, either in Acrobat or a browser. It is vital that the team read all of this document before trying to compete, especially for qualification rounds. While some of the information will remain the same from round to round, you are likely to find round-specific information that can be of great use during qualification rounds. The instructions document has two parts. The first page is a checklist outlining all required steps before, during, and after the round. Following the checklist are detailed instructions for each step. For the purposes of this demonstration, though, we are simply looking for the image download link and the image checksum beneath it. These can be found in the checklist and on page 2. I'm going to copy the checksum now because we'll need it in a moment. You can click this link to the image and depending on what browser you're using and how it's set up, it may start downloading automatically or it may ask you if you want to download it, open it, or save it. We want to save it and I would encourage you to do so to the desktop so you can find it easily later. I will cancel the download as I've already downloaded the image prior to the demonstration. I am using a Windows 7 host system. If you're using a different Windows or Mac, the downloaded image file may look a little bit different. The file will also look different depending on the file format of the compressed image. Zip and 7Z files have different icons, but both can be decompressed using the 7-Zip software we will discuss a little later. The first thing I want to do after downloading the image is verify the checksum of the zipped image file to make sure it wasn't corrupted or truncated during the download process. To do that, I'm going to use WinMD5 Checksum Program, which is freely available online. A link to this program is on page 2 of the instructions. You can click and drag this file onto the window and release it there, or you can use the menus to navigate to the image file you saved on your machine. Once it calculates the checksum, we compare it to the one provided by the Cyber Patriot office by copying and pasting the checksum from the instructions into the box. You then click verify and we see that the MD checksums are the same. That's good. If WinMD5 says that the checksums are not the same, you will need to download the image file again because something happened to it during the download process. That file will not work, so it should be deleted. In our case, the zipped image downloaded correctly, so now I need to extract the contents. We use the free software 7-Zip to unzip image files. Windows has a built-in compression client, and there is other extraction software that is freely available. However, we find that 7-Zip works the best. A link to 7-Zip is on page 2 of the instructions. Whatever program you use, you are looking for the Extract Files, or Extract All option. When you hit Extract, it will ask you for a password. That password can be found in the Stardex email to register your coaches on the day an exhibition or competition round starts. I'm going to copy this password from the email, paste it in, and hit OK. It can take up to 10 or 15 minutes to decompress an image file. I'm going to cancel it because I already went through this step before the demonstration. Now we'll talk about how to open up a Windows 7 image and solve a simple vulnerability. There are a few ways to open the extracted copy of the image. You can double click on the VMX file or navigate to the VMX file in VMware Player. VMware is a free program that plays virtual machine images. A link to this program can be found on page 2 of the instructions.
Images can take a few minutes to load. When you first load an image, a pop-up box will ask for your team ID. Your team ID can be found in the StartX email. It is a 10-digit alphanumeric code. It is not your team number, which starts with 07 and is followed by four digits. If you enter your team ID and receive an error, that is an invalid ID. Double check that you have typed it in correctly and try it again. It's always a good idea to make sure you've entered your ID correctly because if you haven't, then your team might not be credited for what it does during the competition. The next thing we're doing is open the README file. The README file is going to give you some details about where to start any image, so it is important that you read it carefully. The README file may provide a variety of information, such as which users have accounts or types of software allowed on the computer. Specifics of a README file will vary from image to image, but this one specifies that remote connections are not allowed on workstations. One of the things we can do to follow this rule is disable the FTP service. First, open the Services menu, which can be found by clicking the Start menu, navigating to the Control Panel, and then Administrative Tools. You can expand this menu to make the service names fully visible. I'm scrolling down to the Microsoft FTP service and will double click on it. This service is set to run automatically and has been started. Change the startup type to disabled and stop the service. If your speakers are enabled, you will hear a sound after a vulnerability has been fixed. To check your progress during any round of Cyber Patriot competition, double click on the scoring report on your desktop. Here you'll see that the FTP service has been stopped, and fixing the vulnerability has earned me some points. There can be up to a minute delay between fixing the vulnerability and hearing the points gain sound and having it displayed on the scoring report page. There are a few other important parts of the scoring report. The report generated time will tell you when the last time the scoring client looked for vulnerabilities on the system. Approximate running time displays how long an image has been open, but you should keep track of the competition time independently and not base your decisions off the approximate running time of the scoring report. Below that is the current team ID, which shows the team ID that I've entered. Finally, I want to show you the connection status report. If it says good next to the connection status, you have nothing to worry about. However, if any of the checks below it says errors reported or errors detected, you will need to figure out what the problem is. The first check is whether or not the scoring client can connect to Google. This essentially checks if your image can connect to the internet. The bottom two checks may fail if your school's network is blocking outbound connections to the scoring server or if it's preventing the encrypted scoring reports from being sent. These are issues you will need to speak with your school's network administrator or IT department about. We can't make changes to your network, but if your network admin has any questions, please have them contact the Cyber Patriot Program Office. If you have any questions, you can go to AFA adobeconnect.com slash cpoc if an exhibition round is being held. Otherwise, you can email us at cpoc at uscyberpatriot.org or you can call us at the Cyber Patriot Operation Center during East Coast business hours for the duration of the exhibition round. This contact information can also be found in the instructions document. Now we'll talk about how to solve a simple vulnerability in Ubuntu. 
Loading up an Ubuntu image is the same as playing a Windows 7 image. Once you've booted the virtual machine, you will see an Ubuntu desktop. You will be prompted for your team ID. Once you get to the desktop, access the README file. Now we'll solve a vulnerability. First, click the icon on the top right hand corner. From this menu, select the fourth option which will likely read Software Up to Date. The Update Manager may warn you that updates are not being installed automatically. We will need to change this, so click on Settings. You will be prompted for a password, which can be found in the README file on the desktop. After entering the password and gaining permission to change the software update settings, we will change the automatically check for updates field from never to daily. Maintaining up-to-date versions of software is an important part of cybersecurity because it ensures your software is patched against attacks and exploits. Here you will see that changing the update setting has earned us some points. I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.